Hi, I'm Patrick Goethe. I'm from um, uh, a lot of places, but um, I'm currently at the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee. And um, let's see here. I'm an artist, curator, and um, do a lot of research in uh, AR and VR. Um, and um, I'm also, as well as doing work in AR and VR, you probably might have seen me in a movie called The Yes Men as a weird animator who does kind of disgusting videos. Um, <laughs> so anyway, um, that's me. So I do a lot of things. Um, so today, um, I'm just going to really kind of give a laundry list of um, things that are on my scholarly radar as far as um, AR and um, um, AR and um, what I see in contemporary art. Um, Let's see here. As I said, um, you know, this is really kind of an incomplete list because of the fact that even though AR has been, you know, is relatively new, um, you know, there's a lot of people doing it now. And um, actually, I'm going to kind of um, go a little bit short over um, a couple of the people who were right here because they've already said about it, about their own work. Um, let's see here. The interesting thing is, is that AR, AR as a, a contemporary art, art form is not necessarily that new. This is Jeffrey Shaw's Golden Calf. Is basically it's just a it's just a white plinth where you take a monitor with a with a camera, and you you see the um, um, the the statue of the of the Golden Calf. Um, it's been it's been redone at uh, I think at, Z, at ZKM Karlsruhe in Germany uh, just recently, and then um, another one that's really interesting was a um, AR based a marker based um, DJ set, uh, setup that was done by um, let's see here um, Ivan Puperev, Rod Berry, and also uh, Mark Billinghurst downstairs with uh, HitLab. Um, uh, New Zealand, and um, so that's uh, 1999. So, um, but the thing is, is that um, you know, really, you know, as far as cultural production, you wind up um, AR, you know, blowing into blowing into the mass consciousness. You know, with um, you know, this. If you're not familiar with this uh, I, virtual pop star uh, Miku Hatsune. Um, she's just really literally almost sort of like William Gibson's uh, uh, Ray Toei from um, Idoru, who just is this, is this synthetic pop star that's based around um, you know this uh, this this singing software, and um, she caught on fire and basically wound up um, being kind of the star of um, the uh, AR toolkit um, for a long time, but also. The other thing that happens is that you know a lot of other AR uh, things have happened. Like, um, let's see here, Miku Sei and Miku Soine, which allow you to have her as a uh, stay-in girlfriend and actually sleep with her at night. And that's um, yeah, I find that a little creepy. So there she is, you know, in your kitchen. There you are in bed, and you know, wake you up in the morning. That's creepy. Okay. <laughs> Um, it's not what we're here to talk about. It's like I'm talking about trying to cross boundaries, disciplines, and um, you know I'm looking at uh, you know I'll mention some of the people in the room and some of the people on the panel. Um, so um, I'm going to look at two things mainly. Um, I'm really interested in what's going to happen with the glasses, but I'm going to be looking at geolocative and point of interest work, and also re uh, recognition work. Um, one of the guys down on the floor, Mark Squarick. Um, he's collaborated with a bunch of people, including, including myself. And uh, a lot of his work has to do with activism. And and the question is, is that you know, is some cop going? If if you're going to be in a place where you're not allowed to protest, is some cop going to tell you, you know, to cha you know, um, move move your database, right? So this is where we um, did a, a piece called Occupy, Occupy Wall Street AR, because you know you weren't actually able to um, protest on Wall Street. You know, it's only in Zuccotti, Zuccotti Park. So Mark and a number of other people went down with iPads and docented um, this piece of work that actively uh, protested um, the uh, the stock exchange. Another piece he did. Uh, with, in collaboration with you know about another thirty artists, um, is um, 
Occupy May Day, and, and that went across 34 countries, including Tunisia, uh, China, um, Australia, I think, um, uh, I, I, I think South Africa. Um, just absolutely amazing. You, there's, there's a point of interest chart out, out on his uh, website. Um, but it's, uh, the thing is, is that it was amazing that there were so many people who were involved that uh, were able to occupy the entire world. And I think this is one way that we're able to use AR to um, really um, infest public space. Um, Nathan Schaefer, I love the, I love this guy. He's um, he's an Alaskan a an Alaskan AR artist, who um, his best project is the Exit Terminus uh, uh, AR project. Basically, I'm going to go really fast. Is that um, he used it in um, um, in in um, cooperation with the uh, Kenai Na uh, Kenai National uh, um, Forest up. Uh, to illustrate uh, various termini of the uh, exit glacier um, and to kind of show the effects of global warming. And the interesting thing about this is that, you know, there isn't a lot of, there isn't a lot of connectivity out at the at exit glacier. And they had to do some real technical uh, wizardry to do that. And I thought that was really amazing. Um, Let's see here. Some more locative stuff. Um, there was a, a show for College Art Association called "Expose, Intervene, Occupy." Um, you know, as I said, you know, there's like 21 artists who showed in this, so I'm only able to show it, talk about maybe one or two. Um, this is a piece by Matt Rappaport. Um, you know, for the most part, it's going through the financial district, and it uh, it illustrates um, you know uh, Super Mario Brothers coins, you know that you can kind of follow through the uh, uh, that you can follow through the uh, financial <coughs> district, sort of doing a double play on the um, uh, on the function of the space as and using these uh, kind of se uh, semiological sciences uh, as critical pieces. So you'd go and you'd pick up the pick up the coins and. You know, you could you could kind of be sort of like a uh, financial Mario. Um, let's see here, manifest AR. Um, once again, a bunch of people, uh, twenty plus artists, collective, based out of New York. Um, let's see, I'll have to admit I'm one of them. Um, the, what the first piece they're best best known for is "We Are in MoMA," and um, it was basically. Um, let's see here. I think Mark and um, Sander Vierhoff um, put together about uh, 10, 15 artists who did installations, you know, inside inside the MoMA during an opening. And um, so, what's interesting to me about this is that, you know, this is you know the ability for artists to do either an an intervention or a salon de refuse, um, you know, within um, institutions that may or may not usually have them. Um, Okay, recognition. Uh, crossing the border of materiality. Uh, you might see Dina Nord's work downstairs. Um, I'm interested in her work because of the fact that um, you know you have more traditional artists, um, you know, who, like like painters, sculptors, etc., who are um, augmenting their work and um, tying it into things like their website. And the thing is, is that. Um, I'm going to leave this open. I'm wondering what the role of the augment is. In other words, is it giving more meaning? Is it something that's a gizmo? Is, is it something that's, um, you know, what's, what's the role of AR with the more traditional artists? Um, Jeremy, but also on the other hand, you've got Jeremy Bailey, who's doing um, really odd things with photography. This is a show he had last year called Important Portraits, which was actually a Kickstarter. And these are like 30 by 40 uh, photographs in which they had markers and um, they would turn them into these very surreal um, spaces, um, you know, with, um, you know, unicorns and puppies and wonderful things. Um, but also, with the uh, compositions of, say, you know, uh, famous Renaissance uh, portraiture, um, I'll just mention that I've got a piece down downstairs that uses Erasma, 
and it has to do with uh, my work in um, in Alaska at on the Kenai Peninsula and um, just about everything in all the all the major features are um, um, Erasma augmented but the thing is is that it's on a tapestry which could all just as easily be an informatic display so um, one of the reasons why I'm interested in tapestries is because that's um, the the jacquard loom, which is the first digital production uh, method for a uh, um, uh, manufacture method, with, because it used punch cards in 1803. Um, let's see here. Confronting architecture, BC. Got it. Okay, we know that one. Right. Um, environments and form. Darf Designs, Hermiton, they got the Augie last year. I thought it was an amazing thing, this, you know, this wire game that you'd have to um, work through. Um, wonderful piece of work. Um, Claudia Hart, who is now showing at a major, uh, um, major um, um, gallery in New York called Bitforms. Um, She's basically throwing the kitchen sink at, at, at this. I'm very interested in what she's doing in regards to form. Um, her P, her uh, show right now is called uh, Welcome to Alice's Gift Shop. And um, she just has all these artifacts and videos and uh, pieces that uh, deal with, um, okay, I'll, I'll wrap this up here in a minute, that um, you know just uh, deal with the female form, and, but through uh, plates, video, um, print, etc. Um, in conclusion, um, I think there's a lot of potentials for points of interest. Um, we'll see right here probably about this little bit, historical recreations of spaces using the world as your installation space, which I think is so exciting. And um, if you've ever read uh, William Gibson's Spook Country, you know, this is that you know, he's already written about uh, AR as, uh, as an installation medium by recreating the deaths of famous um, celebrities at, at the spots where, they're, where they died. Recognition, uh, layering uh, meaning, menu dart. Um, there's a lot of uh, advancements being made in being able to work with really advanced interfaces. Um, and um, architecture and recognition as installation, which we see with BC. Some issues, um, collections, archival, valuation, and what sort of art our scholars going to consider it as. So, um, you know, currently we're as, you know, as VRML is the second life as VR was, but we can see that, um, you know, I call A art uh, tick off with a bang, but, um, you know, and we got a long way to go as we see. You know, so we haven't even started touching uh, doing art with the glasses yet, right? So anyway, um, that's 12 minutes. So I apologize for. I think we got like two minutes for something. One question. Yeah, one question. Let's do that. Or was that just a decent little laundry list? <laughs> so anyway, for the sake of time. <laughs>